Hi there, everyone. Meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you on today, the 27th, going into the 28th of January 2014. The main topic today uh, really is this low pressure area. You can see it here on the map, just right around Guam. It's running right along the tail end of a cold front that's stretching off here towards the north. So you kind of have this conveyor belt of low-level winds veering off there towards the east, kind of like this. Now, at the base of this, we have well a low level circulation that often starts up just around the western periphery of that and that's what we got right here a low that is starting to develop right around guam one of the key things in the tropics as far as tropical activity is that you need an initialization of that low level circulation and we really are seeing that out here today now this very well could develop into the next name storm system to impact uh, the Philippines out here, possibly by the coming weekend. Now, with that said, in today's update, we're going to talk about how strong it's going to be and uh, when will it impact uh, this area out here. Now, for starters, at least at this time, it, it is very disorganized. In the low-level circulation right in here, you can see all the higher cloud tops, all the ball of the convection off there towards the northwest. So with the low-level circulation exposed, uh, the storm is not really going to get its act together very quickly. And vertical wind shear, dry air inflow will continue to add to that. So rain off the bat, you can just tell by the genesis of this, and also just the dry air off there towards the north. This is not going to make it the typhoon intensity. And you can actually see it here on the high resolution wind map, those winds coming in all the way from the north here, very cool, very dry winds, and that is going to continue to pump into this storm system. Now the downside of that is that it will be adding to a quite a large wind field on the northern periphery of this. So as we have our low pressure system start to track off here towards the west, which we're expecting for it to do, running along the southern periphery of this high pressure off here towards the north, which by the way is actually bringing uh, cool air to northern portions of Luzon, why it's been so chilly out here. But on the flip side of that, a warming trend there in eastern China off towards Korea and Japan just due to the southerly winds. But in short, though, as this low does develop, it is going to run along the southern periphery of that high. Uh, most models, this is a CMC, UK, no gaps, or nav gem, and GFS all agree that this will continue to track off there into a westerly direction, possibly making landfall somewhere around northern Mindanao, uh, Samar, or late day by Friday or early Saturday morning. So really, uh, a lot of the models are in tight agreement and this moving off there towards a westerly track. Now, one thing I want to caution about using this diagram right here, yes, it looks very scary. It's a bunch of lines coming at this area, but it's not expected to intensify any stronger than a weak tropical storm. But yet again, there is still the flood risk with this and also gale force winds up and down the coastline. Just take a look at the winds and let's go ahead and loop through here. Now, this is by Thursday, Friday, uh, as the storm passes just north of Palau or just right over Palau actually heading off there towards Mindanao the highest of wind the winds are going to be on the northern periphery of this and even the risk of tropical storm strength winds right in this actually according to the Navgem model by Friday but the big deal is the interaction here with the northeast monsoon that's why there's such a large wind field furthermore though as it does continue to push on shore let's pull up the precipitation for the same time period and go ahead by Friday. So look at all that bulk of heavy rain showers. Remember this area was just hit last week or actually the last several weeks by heavy rain. Finally, this week we have got some drier air in there to allow some of those rivers drain up. The ground's still saturated. So if this does come to pass, which very well looks like it's going to happen, I mean, that's the nav gem. Compare it up with the GFS by Friday and the Saturday. Yeah, you're going to be seeing some heavy rain showers with those gale force winds on the northern periphery. There's a high risk of flooding. Now, the good news, watch this. By Monday, the GFS has this fall apart. And then let's take a look at the nav gem. By Monday, it falls apart. And most of the models agree with that. So unlike a Gatan or Lingling, Ling, uh, this is not going to stick around for a long time. We're still looking at gale force winds, heavy rain showers on Friday and Saturday, possibly into Sunday as well. But it's not going to be a week or two week long prolonged event at least based on the forecast at this time. I still would get ready for it. I still would look out for the risk of flooding, especially since grounds already saturated. A lot of area is still very loose. 
and it's still very prone to flooding. And of course, we will continue to keep you posted as uh, this storm does develop. Now, what I'm showing you right here is something that is new to westpacweather.com, and once this storm uh, does get a track, if it does get a track, it's going to be posted on the Tropical Information Center and also on the front page. You may have noticed this. It shows a got on. You may think it's a little bit late. It's because we're just still in beta phase with this. We're hoping for some feedback. But if you go to the website, you can also change this over to JMA. Actually, it's better if we use high end. We still have it on there for example purposes. You can change this to JMA, also change it over towards Pagasa. And uh, you can also bring up your local weather on this map. Let's click on Manila, for example, temperatures throughout the rest of the week, plus uh, your forecast based on these things. You can zoom it in and out and also zoom in locally on your local area. Not to mention on the Tropical Information Center, it links to satellites, text updates, uh, so much information here. We just basically thought, where, what is all the information that we use and why is it not all in one location when tracking tropical systems? And bam, there it is. So, yeah, thanks again for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can always post them down there in the comment box below. We always appreciate your feedback, and as always, stay safe out there.